Welcome back. Another Boko Haram attack kills hundreds in the northeastern part of Nigeria as the search continues for more than 200 schoolgirls head hostage by the armed group. The latest attack targeted the town of Gomboro Ngala on the border with Cameroon, where gunmen earlier this week razed scores of buildings and fired on civilians as they tried to flee. Area Senator Ahmed Zana put the death toll at 300 in an account supported by numerous residents. Zana said the town had been left unguarded because soldiers based there had been redeployed north towards Lake Chad in an effort to rescue the more than 200 girls kidnapped by Boko Haram on April 14th. The mass abduction has sparked global outrage and offers of help from the United States, Britain, France and China. And here to discuss this further, live from Boston, Massachusetts, is terrorism expert and professor at Northeastern University, Max Abrahams. Max, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Happy to be with you. Thank you for being with us. The, t the town that was attacked was the place where the soldiers looking for the missing girls were based, and Boko Haram seems to attack anyone who comes in their way. Is there any way to stop this group? Well, a lot of things are going to have to change to, to stop this group. Right now, Boko Haram is pretty much doing whatever it wants in Nigeria, um, and largely because the government and government forces are being extremely incompetent in terms of cracking down uh, on, on this group. Sometimes the government uh, overreacts and in attempting to harm Boko Haram actually harms the local population. And that breeds, you know, distrust of the government. Uh, in other cases, though, the government doesn't seem to be doing much at all. So the government sometimes overreacts, sometimes underreacts. I'll give you an example. In the northeastern part of the country is a forest where it's widely speculated that Boko Haram is hiding out, using it as a safe haven. Indeed, maybe the abducted schoolgirls are based there. And yet, for whatever reason, uh, the government has refused to go in there and clean that area out. And so until the government gets serious about cracking down on Boko Haram, it's going to continue to perpetrate these mass casualty attacks. Yet, yet we know that the, you know, the U.S. team sent to assist with the search for the missing girls, according to U.S. President Barack Obama, consists of military, law enforcement, and other agencies. Can this help the government at all now that it's become an international issue? Marginally, marginally. This is largely token support. The team that will be dispatched to Nigeria uh, is comprised of fewer than 10 U.S. soldiers. And so make no mistake, the purpose of the U.S. assistance is not to uh, counter Boko Haram, it's to help in surveillance, simply in terms of locating these abducted schoolgirls. You know, they, they keep saying that the group, Boko Haram, the members who try to negotiate, it's been said, with the government get beheaded and that they will not negotiate for truth with anybody they deem infidels. So what is it that they're asking for? What is it that they want? Because they're not asking for money. So Right. That's a, that's a very good question. Basically, the, the nature of terrorism more generally has changed. Up until the 1990s, we were accustomed to seeing terrorist groups who would issue, you know, very clear, narrow demands. And it was widely understood that they were using violence in order to achieve government concessions. Today's terrorist groups are often very different. Um, they're, they're often of a religious character. Uh, many of the attacks are anonymous. And when demands are issued at all, which is the minority of cases, they tend to be, you know, expansive demands like, you know, we want Sharia law, which, you know, governments are not going to... to right, but which, is, but which is it, what it, Boko Haram wants to do. That's what they've been talking about. This is why, yeah, they, you know... There has never, there has never uh, been a terrorist group, certainly not since 1968, uh, um, that issues these kinds of expansive demands and has actually managed to achieve them. The larger the demands issued, the lower the likelihood of government concessions. And so the idea that, you know, the Nigerian government is going to somehow cave into Boko Haram and, you know, establish Sharia law as like the national religion or ideology, 
is absolutely absurd. That said, it is possible that Boko Haram will receive what are sometimes called redemptive demands rather than strategic demands. Well, I think, okay, yeah. I, I think, uh, sorry to cut you, I think the, the, the most important question here is, do you believe that these girls, there's any chance that these girls are going to be rescued because they've already threatened to sell them, to marry them off? So what do you think is going to happen? Well, I've done a study on hostage taking and what are the factors that make governments more likely to give confessions to the hostage takers. And the key takeaway from that study is that if the hostage takers do not harm the hostages, they're significantly more likely to achieve their demand. And so my strong recommendation to any hostage takers, including Boko Haram, would be do not harm the hostages, do not harm the schoolgirls, because if they do, it will lower the likelihood of, of government confession. So I'm not really sure what Boko Haram will do in this case, but if it protects the safety of the hostages, it will be rewarded more likely. So just in, in conclusion here, basically, we just, I'm, what I'd like to know is, do you think at all, okay, we don't know where they are, they could be spread out, but what I'm trying to say is that there has been cases in the past of these girls being abducted, found pregnant because of rape, have had babies because of rape, in this situation, there are over 250 girls missing. Is there any chance of retrieving them at this point after well, April? I don't think I, I don't think that it's going to be sort of an all or nothing thing. Okay. Sort of like either the the captives will be unharmed or they will be harmed. I think that they've been divided up into smaller, you know, more manageable groups in order to to hide them. I I, I bet some of them have been harmed. I bet some of them have been sort of sold into marriage for, for $12. I'm seeing reports of that. Others uh, are, are probably not harmed. Um, and so that makes tracking them down more difficult because they're, just, they're probably dispersed throughout that forest. And indeed, some All right. of them have probably been taken outside of the country already. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for being with us. I guess we're going to have to follow up on this story as time goes by. That was Max Abrahams, live from Boston, Massachusetts, the terrorism expert, talking to us about Boko Haram in Nigeria.